Hello everyone, welcome to Moorgate. We're here today as part of the Black History Month 2023 agenda to host an event with Robson Carnu about his transition from a footballer on the field to a fully fledged businessman off the field. I'm Thomas Howell Robson Canu, uh, founder and CEO of The Turmeric Co. Uh, absolute pleasure uh, being in attendance today um, and giving a talk uh, to a really captivated audience. Um, it's such a special opportunity to share my personal journey um, with The Turmeric Co. Um, and also being a former professional football player as well having gone through adversity and various challenges to really create uh, what we believe is a really inspirational company, uh, which is positively making a difference to people's lives through the power of natural nutrition um, and how that journey has manifested uh, for us all um, is really unique. And so, yeah, uh, initiatives such as this um, during the month of October um, with all the meaning behind it is really, really important. And as I said, a real pleasure and privilege uh, to be here and, and share my story uh, with, with the team. The beetroot, um, all of them actually, with the beetroot though for pre-performance, they've done the science behind that it has enhanced their performance during a game. So football, as you know, Thomas, this is original without the ginger. So maybe a bit easier on the palate. Yeah, cool. yeah, Does it give you that sort of warm feeling as well? Yeah. You tell yeah. us that? Yeah, that's strong. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's warm. That's right. That's I'll go eat it. That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's nice. Yeah. Wow. I'm actually so, I'm actually almost finished it. This is actually so tasty. Oh, you're still drinking it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, oh, well, no, no, yeah. this is nice. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is good. This is really, really good. Well, evening all. Thank you for coming um, and sort of giving us your valuable time tonight. And I'd like to hand over to uh, Thomas Robson Carnu. Thank you, Narinda. Um, no, massive thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. No, a pleasure to be here. It's always nice, obviously, having these, uh, you know, sort of bespoke and opportunities to share, obviously, my personal story. Yeah, my personal journey. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, have played in the Premier League, so I didn't manage to win the Barclays Premier League uh, trophy up there, but. Um, I certainly played in, in, in the league of players who, who did win it. So uh, as a professional footballer, uh, obviously had uh, a f the privilege of having a career at the highest level of the game. Um, for those who don't know me, I obviously played internationally for Wales and also for West Bromwich Albion and for Reading Football Club. Um, and I played a career at the highest level for over 15 years. But to actually get there, um, I had to come through quite some severe adversity. So I suffered two major surgeries as a teenager on my knee um, after rupturing my cruciate knee ligament. And uh, coming back from those surgeries, I had to basically reduce the inflammation and pain in my knee. And uh, unfortunately, at the time, the club doctors and the physios, they prescribed me anti-inflammatories and painkillers, which are really, you know, common drugs and medications for reducing pain and inflammation. But unfortunately, my body had a complete adverse reaction to them. So I started passing blood of my urine, had severe nausea. And this was after two and a half years of, you know, surgeries um, on my knee. So it was a really traumatic period. And at the time, uh, my father and I, we basically turned to natural nutrition to uh, support my recovery. Um, and we began researching natural ingredients that reduced pain and ultimately inflammation. Um, and we began seeing different cultures around the world, uh, different practices, so things such as Ayurvedic uh, practices, things such as um, ancient Asian co uh, cultures, what raw ingredients they would use to support their health and ultimately reduce pain and reduce inflammation. And these ingredients consist of things like watermelon, things like pomegranate, pineapple, ginger, and subsequently turmeric. But it was all about having it in its rawest format, which is obviously the root or the raw flesh, um, but also having it in a bioavailable form. So, you know, not a capsule or a tablet or powder. It was about having it in its rawest format and in a form which is easily absorbable. So adding it with a black pepper mix, adding it with a fat soluble to enhance the bioavailability of the active compounds. And um, my dad basically sourced these raw ingredients, turned them into 
what initially was a paste and then became this golden elixir. Um, and I began using it and it was my only real opportunity of recovery. So I just stuck with it. Um, and two, three weeks in, began noticing a little less restriction in my knee. It would normally take me about 15 minutes coming out of bed just to get the range into my knee again. Um, but it was around six weeks of using this blend every single day. And my dad would make these batches every few days and leave them in my fridge that I woke up my usual routine, roll out of bed into the bathroom and into the shower. And it was in the shower at that moment in time that I realized that was the first time in over two and a half years that I had woken up without any pain or restriction in my knee. So for me, it was a massive light bulb moment because up until that point, the doctors and the physios and the surgeons had all said that, you know, I would always experience pain or inflammation um, and that the way to remedy it was to take medication. And so I ultimately defied the odds, uh, odds in terms of recovery by, um, you know, this blend that my father created. And so from that point on, um, I went on a year later to make my debut for Reading Football Club. Um, a year after that, I went on to play uh, internationally for Wales. And a year after that, I made my um, Premier League debut um, when we got promoted with Reading Football Club to the Premier League. And I was able to do all of that pain-free. Um, and I used this blend throughout my whole career, ultimately as my secret weapon. So I began realizing that, you know, I would recover quicker than my teammates. You know, I'd get to the uh, flu season, which we're all coming into now, and you know, I'd never get run down, would never get a cold, um, and realized that there was other benefits to actually consuming this blend. And so we began prescribing it to friends and family, um, to teammates, you know, my auntie who had real severe arthritis in her hands, um, you know, couldn't hold a pen after a few weeks of using it, could write again, uncle, real bad back pain, chronic back pain, six weeks of using it again was pain free. So we realized that this was a real unique homemade recipe um, and remedy. And so it was in 2016 when I was in Harrods um, and I saw a turmeric shot on the shelf and, you know, really excited because up until this point, my father had ruined dozens upon dozens of blenders. You know, he'd go to his work with stained fingertips. Every utensil in the kitchen, you know, was pretty much stained yellow. Um, so to see a turmeric shot on the shelf was, you know, amazing to see. So. I bought a load of them, went back to my dad's and we went to drink it together and we literally spat it out. We couldn't believe how inferior it was to what we were creating at home. And it was only when we spun the bottle and looked at the ingredients that we realized that the base of this shot, which was sitting on the shelf, was apple juice and water and the turmeric was turmeric powder, you know, not the raw root. And there was no other functional ingredients in this functional shot. So we realized that there was a massive gap in the market between what was currently on shelf and actually products delivering functional benefit. And we realized that what we had as a homemade recipe could do that. So uh, we set about bringing this product and this blend to market. Um, and we went on a two year journey. Uh, we went and spoke with the leading beverage manufacturers in the UK and in Europe. Um, they all laughed us out of their door because they said you'll never be able to manufacture that product because the quality of the ingredients is too high and the process is too complex. So we basically became a manufacturer of uh, functional turmeric based shots ourselves. Um, we set up a facility um, and two years after making the decision, we launched uh, the Turmeric Co as a brand. And what we realized was rather than immediately sitting on shelf, we really needed to uh, build a brand, build an advocacy, build a community. Um, so the way that we did that was by going direct to consumer. We built a really strong um, online model. We built a social audience through experience and book aimed to build a real advocacy around what we were doing in our ethos and values of a high quality, truly functional and now clinically backed product. And so what we then did was launch a digitally native vertical brand through the Turmeric Co. Launched that in 2018 and within four weeks of our first sale, we began receiving um, customer testimonials, exactly the same experience of what I had experienced, you know, real life changing. Um, uh, testimonials and 
Yeah, uh, that was in 2018 we launched. We grew relatively quickly. Uh, we hit capacity at our previous manufacturing site um, in 2020. Um, we then went on an 18-month journey of upscaling our manufacturer. Um, we were producing around 30,000 shots a week at that moment in time. And we were like, how, how, what step change do we want to make? Do we want to go to 50,000 shots? Do we want to be able to produce 75,000 shots? Um, but we believed in the product, obviously. Um, but we also wanted to offer you know, exponential growth opportunities for the business. So we um, moved to a new site in Cambridgeshire, uh, which allows us to produce 1.5 million shots a week. Um, so setting that up took about two years. Uh, massive investment, massive you know, operational output. You know, we're BRC, um, global standard. So brand reputational compliance, global standard manufacturer. Uh, we just had our audit a couple of months ago and we passed that with the AA. So it's the highest level of food manufacturer you can get globally. So, you know, we've really invested in what we do. And um, since launch in 2018, we've now had over 10,000 life-changing customer testimonials. We've impacted um, over 100,000 people uh, through our online website in the UK. Um, and we are launching into Sainsbury's tomorrow, uh, which is a massive achievement. And we are uh, looking to take the brand international over the next few years. So that's my um, journey of why I'm here today. And obviously, you know, really pleased that I could share that with you. Transitioning from a really successful sportsman into the world of business, very different. There's some real synergies between the corporate world and the football world, especially in terms of, um, as we're talking about Black History Month, as, as you see real diversity, probably not at the most senior levels. And that's, no, that's not dissimilar to the corporate world. Mm. So, so how was that transition and what, what sort of obstacles did you see? As I said, when we launched the business, we went direct to consumer. So we were D to C brand. And even you know, up until last week before we had our first retail order, you know, we 98% of our revenues was direct to consumer. Yeah. Now, retail as an example, when you go into Sainsbury's or Asda or Tesco, more than 99.5% of the brands and products that you pick up are um, owned by non-ethnic minority groups. So when you begin to put that into perspective, you know, so for us as a black owned, you know, ethnic minority owned business, we're stepping into retail. We're, we're beginning to affect positive change in terms of diversity, you know, and driving that inclusivity, as you said, at the higher levels, the higher echelons of, you know, ownership and, you know, directors and CEO, whatever you want to call it. So I would say understanding things like that is really mind blowing because you're like, how is that even possible? You know, it's like, the you know, 50% of the foods on, 90% of the foods on shelf come from, <laughs> you know, different parts of the world. And yet, how can that be? So, yeah, I think there are definitely challenges in terms of, um, you know, how you begin to shape, um, uh, evolve the hierarchies yeah. of society. So what would be that, what would be the gem you would give me in terms of how I look to overcome that? Because you know what you're walking into, you know you're different, and actually that difference is your superpower, because you're not only different, you've, bro you've broken into Sainsbury's. Obviously historically, like there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, history in terms of all of our past, but what actually happens for the person or for the individual at that level is they end up talking themselves out of it. They end up saying, this hasn't been done before. This can't be done. You know, this wasn't done in the past. It's not meant to be in the, you know, so actually if you just say, look, like this is, this is what I want, this is what I, what I want to achieve. And the thing is, is actually you can see that as reality because look at the change which has taken place over the last few decades, you know, we spoke about it. You know, there wasn't massive, you know, uh, diversity and in, in, inclusivity, whereas that's beginning to change. And so it's the next step and the next layer. So, yeah, I think um, it's all possible and, and positive change is happening. And, and do you know what? I love that. So um, be the change you want to see, right? So be the change you want to see. And I really 
So sorry, I should have said I co-chair the Black Profession Forum at Barclays. And actually, when I think about even an event like this, this wouldn't have happened three years ago, let alone 20. So there is change. Personally, it needs to be faster, swifter, quicker. I'm all about that. But I think you're absolutely right. One, be the change you want to see, but equally understand that we're moving. And I think sometimes it's difficult to feel that if you don't see it. You've, you've spoken a lot about mindset. I just wanted to ask you, from being a footballer to starting an entrepreneurial journey, is no, it's not easy for anyone to go into business. What skills did you draw upon, or you know, what were your main challenges when you went into being an entrepreneur? Yeah, I think um, the biggest thing of what I took from being a footballer to being an entrepreneur was the, you know, the attention to detail and the willingness to persevere. Um, you know, and that's why a lot of people ask me, what's the, you know, what's the most important bit of advice that you would give to another entrepreneur? Um, and I would say, like, be passionate about what you're doing because you're going to come up against challenges. You know, you're going to come up against setbacks. And if you're not truly passionate about what you're doing, like at some point, one of those setbacks and one of those hurdles will stop you because you're not going to you're not going to be willing to persevere willingness to persevere which is ultimately the difference between being successful and not being successful perseverance is di directly linked to the level of passion from an entrepreneurial perspective that you have for what you're doing we're also raising some money for a charity i sort of uh, got involved with the arbin foundation which obviously thomas you know everything about so i've got a signed um, shirt here from the West Brom and Thomas has kindly agreed to sign the back of that as well. So we've got John Emerson from Gloss who kindly agreed to uh, pay £300 for this shirt. So this, this money is going to go towards uh, children with autism. So can you come down and uh, say yeah, a bit about so if you want to say a bit about yourself and, um, and the company as well. Sure, sure. Uh, my name's John Emerson. I represent um, a company called Gloss. Uh, we specialise in creative and digital brilliance and we're really proud and we genuinely do feel honoured to be amongst such great minds like you all today. It's been a really inspiration, honestly, listening to you speak, Thomas, and thank you so much for inspirational words. And I'd like to thank all of you in the audience as well, because it was wonderful talking to you all up there, and I genuinely did feel a connection with everybody that I did speak to. So on behalf of myself and um, the entire Gloss team, I'd like to thank you all for um, having me here, to be honest with you, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you again for your time. I think that the, the, the footballer to boardroom piece is phenomenal because there aren't many stories like that. And I love the be centred around yourself and understand your purpose and, and your mindset is, is all, all important and I'll certainly be buying that book. So thank you. Your humility and honest, your your authenticity was phenomenal. So thank one you. big last round and then we'll go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. No, really it's great no, to meet you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sonal Shah, Deputy Co-Chair of Asian Professionals Resource Group and partnership manager for Win the Gender Network, um, or ERG. I came today to see Thomas and to really understand the mindset of a footballer. What I really loved today and some key takeaways were his idea of manifesting your end goal before it's even happened and the use of manis manifestation. And he was so down to earth and authentic in sharing all his golden nuggets today. It was really well worth it to listen to him and understand his absolute positive mindset and um, learn from him. So thank you, Black Professionals, for another excellent Black History Month. Hi, I'm Deborah Barnwell. I'm one of the diversity, equity and inclusion partners for UK Corporate. I've come today to see Thomas Robson Carnew. It's been a fantastic event. I've absolutely loved it. I think one of my biggest takeaways from today has to be impeccable actions because Thomas has said it about 10 times, which is so true. 
be impeccable about your actions, so I absolutely love that. But I also love the fact that, just like me, he loves to manifest and he does a lot of gratitude as well. And just like him, I believe you can manifest anything in life. And he's shown that he's transitioned from a professional footballer into now being a professional and successful entrepreneur. Hi guys, my name's Natalie Ojiva and I'm the Eagle Labs Diversity and Inclusion Lead. And today we are here celebrating Black History Month, hearing from Thomas himself, founder of Tumeric and Co. So it's actually quite interesting. Thomas is on our Black Venture Growth Programme. And if you guys don't know what that is, you should know. So Eagle Lab sits within Barclays and we're there to support the UK entrepreneurial ecosystem. My role specifically is looking at how we're supporting underrepresented founders. And we have launched two programs to support the black community. One, our Black Founders Accelerator, which is for early stage businesses. And then we've launched our second one, which is our Black Venture Growth Program, which is for those businesses that are a little bit later stage at a growth stage. So one of the things that I would say is if you're a founder, check out our program programs we have loads of content that is relevant to you to help develop your business and enjoy the rest of black history month thank you everybody for coming down to tonight's event with robson Carmu. it was a fantastic event really hearing about his experiences as a professional footballer um for west bromwich arsenal my favorite team so i'm going to be a bit biased with it <laughs> but of course as well uh, as an international star for wales as well and seeing his transition from the pitch to essentially becoming a fully fledged entrepreneur where a product's about to enter the Sainsbury shelves. Um, I myself am definitely a big fan of it. As you can see, uh, tonight's event has been really insightful. It's been really great to be a part of it. Great energy in the room and thank you to everyone that came down.